Okay, in this video, what we are going to be doing is changing the hard drive in the Compaq Evo D510 small form factor because the hard drive that is in it at present is one of these really noisy 40 gigabyte Western Digital hard drives. The other thing we're going to be doing is reinstalling the operating system. I'm not going to be doing a straight up clone from this drive to the new drive, which is right here and has fluid bearings. The reason why is because I want to get rid of all the junk. I want to install a fresh operating system. There's nothing on this drive right now but an operating system. So there's no point in it being here. So what we're going to do is going to be to just change the drive. Now I'm not really sure how this comes out. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove if you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to remove this somehow the IDE cable and then somehow or another this drive like that okay this drive just comes up like that problem solved so there's the drive replaced there alright so that's in place now we can take it and put it here put it in the right way just like that now it's installed see I love toolless cases for that thing purely there are some ways in which toolless cases are kind of annoying because most toolless cases do actually still need tools for some of the stupidest things that should be toolless I hope the RAM is good. But anyway, so that's now in place. I was going to replace the optical drive, and I may do it anyway, just because there's no reason for there to be a DVD burner in a server. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'm going to grab an optical drive and I'll replace the optical drive too while I'm here. Okay, so out of a machine that will no longer need it, I have this DVD-ROM drive. Because I do still need the ability to boot to DVDs on this thing. Well, I don't. I could always use USBs, but DVD is more convenient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. It's actually got the CD audio cable, which is not something you see in a lot of OEM systems. They tend to get rid of those. And route the audio over the bus, which is a cheap hack and doesn't work on IDE systems generally, especially not these. Now, I should just simply slide out like that. I'll leave the screws in place. Now I'll take this new drive and put it in here instead. Or maybe we won't do that because it's not going in place. There we go. So, that should be just fine. Oops. One job. Plug it in. I hope it's jumpered correctly. What's this one jumper for? It's jumper for master. This one's jumper for cable select. It probably won't matter, since this is a single device cable, but I am going to jumper it for master just in case it doesn't appreciate cable select because sometimes these systems are very finicky about what they will and will not do especially on the IDE bus. I don't really understand why that is. I also don't really understand why this thing is so weak when it comes down to insertion. It's kind of strange. Well, there we go. It is in place. Now I need the case. Put the case back in place on a bed. And there we go. Just like that. So now you get a monitor hooked up and you will install the OS. I hope this optical drive works. Because if it doesn't, well, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. 
<laughs> I think this is configured to automatically power on when I plug it in. Yes. Here it is pretty much entirely silent. It's probably not going to have a good time. Oh no. I thought that was a good optical drive. I guess it's not. Do I have the DVD in place? No, I don't know where I put it. There it is. Hold on a minute. That was a good DVD drive. So I don't know how that happened. Hopefully I don't have to use the press and bang tactic all the time. Go ahead and save those changes and it should boot to the CD. Assuming the boot is configured correctly. Oh, it is. So, English. Install Ubuntu server. Alright. English. We are in Canada. Detect keyboard layout? No. It's not a big deal. We'll just go for you, English, US, English, US. And that's going to detect the hardware. And load a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know why it looks blue on the camera. It's actually purple. I just tried to read from the floppy for some reason. Now, it looks blue on the camera. I wonder if it'll look blue on the final video. It's actually purple. Those of you that have installed Ubuntu before with the Anaconda text installer, you already know that. Hope this disk is good. Because <laughs> I didn't check it. Although it passed the verifying image burn. That doesn't usually mean much, though, because the image could be bad. And that's something that image burn can't detect. This is a D510. Full name for a new user. Okay. And we need a password. Okay. Home directory encryption. Well, I trust my system not to get stolen, so I don't think we are going to do that. Time zone is correct. And besides, sometimes I've got issues with Linux not identifying hardware correctly during the boot process, and then you can't enter your encrypted password. Your password for the uh, the drive encryption. All right, we'll set up logical volume management. Why not? Usually I don't bother, but I'm going to do it this time. Write the disks. Yes. 40 gigabytes, the whole drive. Looks good enough to me. Yes. I failed. No, it didn't. So now we are installing. Well, it didn't ask me to uh, install packages. So I'm assuming it's going to do that in a minute. So 
setting up the logical volume management stuff. Probably shouldn't have bothered. That's probably going to screw something up later on. I'll find the system's too old to support that. Well, the bootloader should know what it is, and the bootloader is stored at the beginning of the hard drive in the master boot record, so that shouldn't be an issue. But, having said that, who knows? What's it doing now? Yeah, I don't have a hard drive in here with a noisy head stack, so I can't tell what it, if it's doing anything anymore. I have to look at the drive light. Yeah, here's the process. There we go. HTTP proxy. Do not need a proxy. Now it's going to ask me for my packages. What do I want to install? This is going to be a LAMP server. Or at least that's what it was before this. It's, that's what it's still going to be, so... I think it's going to install updates as well while it's doing this. Okay, here we go. Select and install software. Alright. Laptop detect. And yeah, this is not a laptop. Upgrading software. Install security updates automatically, yes. That's a good thing to do. Especially on a server. Anybody who doesn't automatically install security updates on their server is a moron. So, I can't see any reason why that wouldn't be a valid I don't think I need an SSH server, but I'll go ahead and install it anyway. I might install the Samba as well. And of course it's going to be LAMP. So... SSH is for getting into it. Because I have a Windows network, Samba would be useful for putting files onto it. Although if I've got Samba, I don't really need and SSH, well, I'll put it on there anyway. So I'd rather do that than have to, every single time I want to put something on it, put it on a USB, run down to where this is going to be, put it on there, plug the USB in, put it on, unplug the USB, bring it all the way back up. That's a waste of time. I might as well just do it from here. Because it saves me the trips that I have to take down. What I might do when I'm done is disable my SQL, because I'm not going to be using it right off the bat. I may find a use for it later on, which is why I'm installing it, but I don't think that I'm going to need it really for what I'm going to be doing with this. I don't have ter a terrific lot of hard drive storage space, not hard drive, tape storage space on this, so hopefully this does not run over the end of the tape. And I know a lot of people have complained about this camcorder and its sibilant audio, but there really isn't much I can do about that. It's just the way it records. I find it's especially worse when I have fans going. So I must be doing some kind of compression in the audio, and I don't know why I'd be doing that. It's only a Video 8 camera.
This is taking a while. One thing I'm going to point out right off the bat, this is not a hardening guide. I'm not going to be doing one, because I am not a security expert. So, if you want to know how to harden your server, go talk to a security expert. If you want to know if your hardening is good enough, go talk to a security expert. I can tell you right away, if you have to ask, it's not. Just right off the bat. If you have to ask about something, it's probably not what you think it is. So, especially when it comes down to security, nothing is good enough in security. So that's another reason why I'm not doing it. I don't want to be liable for anything. If somebody uses this video as a guide to do this and somebody breaks into their system, it's not my responsibility. And I can say that whatever you do, I can disclaim responsibility for that, but somebody's still going to point their finger and say, you did it, it's your fault, so I'm not going to bother. I'm going to do that separately off video anyway because it'll take forever. Probably need a non-tape based camera to go through that. If that is enough of an indication as to how long it's going to take, there you go. It's not a video that a lot of people would watch. Install to the master boot record. Yes. And it's telling me my tape is almost over. That's not good. <laughs> All right, installation complete. So remove the disc and continue. So it's not actually complete now, is it? If the ta if the video stops at any point, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. <laughs> and this is CP666 signing off, where I will sign off when the tape is over, because I'm not getting another tape for this. So we'll just watch the boot process. I think I'll conclude the video with that. Although you can't really read it. The fact that the cannon is wildly going in and out of focus really doesn't help. All right. That is all. I don't have anything else to say to you. So indeed, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.